Hello, one. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son. Yahweh Bashem Yahushan Bashem Warakar Kodash. And double honors to the elder apostles of the great no stone that have taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushan. And including the other bishops on down. And overall, Yahweh Bashem Yahushan Bashem Yahushan Bashem And including the one third as well that do follow as we give this gospel of the kingdom as we should. So what I want to do is I want to speak briefly in regards to this interview, which was um, between Joe Rogan and DJ Trump here. And, um, you know, at the very end of this interview, he mentions key things that I want to talk about. You know, he talks about the UFOs, and then he talks about how there's prophets that's warning us of the end times. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I'm going to play this video over here, and we're going to get right into it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, you know, just touch on a couple of points that he made, those couple of points that he's made uh, bit by bit. So let's begin. Sir, there's something there. You know, they, there's something there. Let me turn this up a yeah, I've bit. talked to quite a few of They're them. They're not that conspiracy are, guys. Well, I mean, the just the Commander David Fravor thing in 2004 off the coast of San Diego, they clocked that thing going yeah. from 50,000 feet above sea level to 50 in a second. <laughs> yeah. They don't know what that's, it is. That's tough to beat. Yeah, they, they saw something in the water. It was hovering over that. There's no reason not to. I mean, there's no reason not to think that Mars and all these planets don't have life. You know, they said, sir, there's something there. You know, they... There's they something there. there. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to quite a few of them. They're not conspiracy guys. Well, I mean, the just the Commander David Fravor thing in 2004 off the coast of San Diego, they clocked that thing going yeah. from 50,000 feet above sea level to 50 in a second. <laughs> yeah. They don't know what that's, it is. That's tough to beat. <clears throat> yeah, they, they saw something in the water. It was hovering over that something that was making a disturbance in the water. They got video evidence of this thing. The two different fighter jets with pilots in them saw it. There's, you know, visual evidence, photographic evidence, video evidence, radar evidence. Whatever the hell it is, it moves in a way that would turn a human being into jello if yeah. they were inside of it. The G-force, no one would survive. Oh, so the like, what is that? And we don't, they don't, it doesn't have a heat signature. They don't know what their propulsion system was. But when you fly in some of these jets, these pilots have to be in great shape. Oh, yeah. I flew with the Blue Angels about. once. Yeah. Yeah, I got example. to fly. I guess and it's those an are older, And those are older machines. And they're crazy. When you when you fly in some of these things, oh my it's God. amazing. Yeah, but yeah you I can be, imagine. you got to be special. But these things that these people are encountering are far superior to what we know of. Yeah. Do, yeah. Is it possible that there's some military or government program that you weren't, that they didn't tell you about? I, I think I had a great relationship with the military, basically. But, uh, you know, I didn't like certain people. I would have gotten them out if I thought, if I were, if the election was different, I would have fired, you know, all of them quickly. Some, most of them I did fire. Uh, Biden should have fired every military person involved with Afghanistan. He yeah, so he's talking about something else. But anyway, he he's going to speak on, a, on another point that I, that I really want to get into as well, but I first want to deal with the UFO situation. And as well as just to mention, I mean, America, and as well as the rest of the governments all around the world, have always known about UFO activity. I mean, we could talk about the Washington flap, right? As it reads, a series of UFO sightings in Washington, D.C. from July the 12th to, to, um, to the 29th of that year. Right. And um, you had a reasonable amount of UFOs that was flying right above the White House at that time. And that was a big thing that they spoke about. So we're talking, what, 72 years ago, right, if I'm correct. Yeah, 72 years ago. So you mean to tell me they don't they don't really have a, a, a great detail of knowledge about these things that was gathered from doing during from that time and even times prior. Come on, they, they know what it's all about. They know what these things represent. And the thing of it is, what makes these people to know that these so-called UFOs are existing and what they basically represent? What proves that they would know that during the time of Herod the King, Herod the King, see, 
two thousand years ago, they didn't have the technology that that these devils have right now with these cameras and these mic, these telescope, these excuse me, these telescopes, and all of this equipment, right? So they know they have a, a lot of detail. Now they don't know how to really do these so called UFOs or these AUPs, but what they do know is that they are existing, and and they also know as well as it reads that the children of this world are wiser than the children of, of the light, which are the Israelites, right? And thou art wiser than Daniel. So they, come on, they know everything, man. These devils, they know that the prophets are out there saying whatever they're saying and is, and is actually true to them. And they know this. But in their mind, what they want to do is they want to try and overset what the prophets have been saying and think that they can override the will of the Lord, but you ain't going to override the will of the Lord, okay? So, these devils, they know what it is, as much as we know. But you see, in this interview, he acted like he didn't know much about the UFO activity that was going on. And maybe, as Joe Rogan is putting it, did they hide some of this information from you? Listen, the President of the United States has to get access to all of this information. Even back in um, 84, I think it was. Was it 1984 or 85? Where there was a speech that was given by the former president, which was Ronald Reagan, it was. Ronald Reagan, and he made a statement saying that if we were to encounter, and I'm just saying it in my way, I don't remember word for word as he put it, but he basically said that we would have to put aside our differences that we have between each other if we were to encounter an alien force, an alien invasion, something to that equivalent, okay? And that was in 84, but between 84 and 86, that speech was given. So these devils, they know what it is, and they know what time it is when these things begin to appear, all right? And this was done on the 25th, 2019, which I believe this was the time when the COV era just begun. So um, as this reads, with the stroke of a pen, U.S. Space Force becomes a reality. President Donald J. Trump signs into law December 20 of the sprawling $738 billion defense bill, making history by creating the Space Force as a standalone sixth branch of the U.S. military and guaranteeing for the first time in 12 weeks of paid parental leave for federal workers. So why did he have to sign this in? Again, because they know very well, and as well as even the governments around the world very well know the same, that they, they, they may come a time where they may have to deal with these forces, which will be alien, which the term alien just means strange. It's not pointing to this image that these devils are putting in your mind of green men coming from outer space looking like E.T., that's not alien, all right? That's just a, uh, a formulated Hollywood film. That's all it is, okay? Alien just simply means strange. So the aliens which will invade planet Earth will be the angelic forces which are of the Heavenly Father. And this is something that these devils very well know, all right? And even DJ Trump, that's why he signed this bill in, Okay? So what I want to do is I want to read Matthew's uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. Now when Yahawashai was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So that star is basically a chariot which appeared. In the region where the, where the Messiah was being located. So Herod the king sent the men down to go seek the child. And eventually later on what he planned on doing was just to kill the child. By getting rid of all of the boys. All of the male children that were being born. Because they, they wanted to stop the coming of the Messiah. All right. So if they knew this back then with, with a lack of te technological resources, that that was the case, then how much more with the, the technological resources that they do have? 
all right? And, and as well as we live in the age of information, as it is also written in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, that we will enter into an age where knowledge will be increasing. Come on, Esau knows about the UFOs. He also knows that even about them, there lies the coming of the Messiah. Okay? If Herod the king knew a little of what he knew and what it represented, how much more do these devils know? So um, let's read this now. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. And then said he unto me, This is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And this devil has stolen everything. He's stolen us as a people, stolen our resources, and has stolen our land or lands. And every one that swears shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And I mean, this devil swears falsely. Even when the prime minister or the president, primarily in America, when the president swears in, he has to swear before the Bible and the word inaugur, which means to stand in the face of the demons, which are. Uh, I remember the Apostle Gabar brought that out. And so, in verse 4, as it reads, I will bring it forth, say of the Lord of hosts. And just to include, too, they make you swear on the Bible in court, too. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. The house of the thief is America, and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. And it shall come, excuse me, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So the Lord is going to enter into the house of the thief to destroy America after those missiles or probably during the same time. We'll have to wait and see how this thing's going to play out though. All right, so this chariot wasn't as big in comparisons to the fathership. All right, but I read the scripture to convey a point that even he knew that it was a curse because I mean, in order for you to be Jewish, which Herod was that in itself. He wasn't officially a real one according to his, his lineage because his lineage goes back to Antipater, which was a, 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 a Greek. Just like, for example, what we have today right now, right? In order for them to actually be the J double wishes that they call themselves, right? They have to know our ways. And so Herod the king would have had, had to have known scriptures here and there. So what I'm speculating, again, is that Herod must have known something. He must have probably known the scripture or two to know that, oh, yeah, well, that's the Messiah when the star was in the east. All right. So to him, it was a curse, really. It was a curse. And it's the same thing how it is now. When we see those chariots flying above our heads or when regular people see it, it alerts the government that, oh, boy, something is about to be had. Just like Herod when he saw the, the, the Eastern Star. Okay? So, um, let's go and read Daniel's, um, the seventh chapter. And we will read verse 12, beginning with that over there. And we will read beginning with verse 12. As this reads, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, and yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So after these beasts, in other words, these kingdoms was mentioned, now this is also said. Daniel 7 and 13, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, which is the Most High, and they brought him near before him. So that's why it reads in the book of 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, where it reads that um, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Because Esau's kingdom, which will be the last kingdom, would be the kingdom that we're under right now. Then the Messiah would make his second return to establish the kingdom, as verse 14 puts it. And there was given him a dominion and glory and a kingdom, and that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And in that kingdom, you will have the saints which will possess it forever and ever. That's in the book of Daniel 7 and 26, I believe. Let me see if I can read that as well. To tie that in. Um, 
Yeah, so as it reads, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Um, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. We can also include Daniel's 2, and I believe it's 24 to verse 26 in that as well. And even that this kingdom, which Shahawashai will be heading, will not be given to another people. It will only be but the saints ruling it. All right, so going back to the point of the matter, these devils, they very well know quite a bit. They may not know as much as we know about Bible prophecy is concerned, but they know a bit about something in regards to what the UFOs represent. Like I said, if Herod knew what he knew with little technology and with the, the, the little knowledge that he had, how much more Esau would know now? Come on, man. So um, DJ Trump, he already know what it is, but he's acting like in this interview, he didn't really know exactly what the UFOs are because there's certain people that didn't let him, that didn't, you know, bring him in to be privy to that information. No, he knows about the UFOs. As I just already read about the, um, the Space Force legislation that he passed. So, um, Let's read this as well. This is on Matthew 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all of the tribes mourn. Why are they going to mourn? Because judgment is going to proceed. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven and excuse me, of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. So through Yahawashai's return, as we already know, that the deliverance is going to be made grandiose and it's going to be globally seen. And it's going to be so miraculously shown in the eyes of the people. So much so it's going to overtake the, the miraculous salvation which was had in ancient Egypt. That's in the book of Jeremiah 16 and verse 14, uh, reading on um, Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, and even so are men. So that would then mean that reincarnation is a thing, because it says, and they also which pierced him, all right? Because no one has lived the 2,000 years, so that means that these people have to be here in the reincarnation, okay? They came as newborn babies in this generation, and they're here right with us right now. <clears throat> All right, for that to be the case. So, yeah, between the elite on the right hand side and on the left hand side of things, they very well know what the chariots represent, as they call UFOs. They know what it is. All right. And there's something else that I want to talk about in this as well, because he talks about us being the prophets that's giving the warning. I mean, who who else calls themselves prophets? Now, you have these other Israelite groups. I mean, you can call them prophets, too. But who usually calls themselves the prophets? It's usually the men of great no stuff. Okay? So that's who he's really speaking about. He's speaking about the men that you see on the streets. As he's going to mention anyway. Let's pull, I want to pull this back so we can get this correctly. The Middle East is rapidly changing. You know, there are prophets that say the world will come to an end. In the Middle East, you know. Yeah, and who else is conveying that message? Is it is it is it the Christian churches? Is it the um the Seven Day Adventists? Is it the Jehovah Witnesses? Is it the Muslims? No, he's referring to us because we're the only ones, primarily the men of Great Millstone, we're the only ones that talk about America's destruction and biblical prophecy. We talk about um, martial law. We talk about being beheaded. The list goes on concerning the prophecies that are in the Bible we talk about. So he's talking about us when he says this. Okay. And speaking about war in the Middle East. 
I'm going to be talking about that as well after I get done with this right here. So I'm going to allow him to talk some more and see what else he, he can say that I can build on. Right, right. And we have weapons today that are so scary. When you look, I rebuilt them all. And when you look at the weapons we have today, the biggest threat we have in the world today is nuclear weapons. Everyone. Yeah, and you know, he's absolutely correct. Because even, <laughs> even, um, what's his name, man? Robert, Op Robert Oppenheimer. He mentioned that I've become the destroyer of worlds. And I remember there was an interview that he did. And I think it was in 1962. You could tell that the guy wasn't wasn't happy at all. You know, he wasn't happy about what he invented because he knew from that point what he invented was definitely going to be so destructive that that billions would die by. He knew this. All right, and even um Albert Einstein said because I was watching a little bit of the documentary of him as well, and he even mentioned he said, "Man, had I not known what 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 Germany was up to, I wouldn't have." had opened Pandora's box. I'm saying it a bit off. I'm saying it in my way, but that's what he said. All right? So, absolutely. But these weapons they have is so that eventually the laws will can be done. And that is to lay waste all of these nations and primarily in completion America. And that's just what it is right there. So that's all I'm going to say with this. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashiach Shai, Bahashem, Mahavakar Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone that have taught me this truth, and including the elder bishops on down, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashiach Shai, and Yahweh Bashiach Shai broke a thumb to the 144,000, and including the one third, and this is your brother Laban. I'm out. Shalom.